All right, Steve, I mentioned 82 laps. Break this race down for us. Yeah, 82 laps at a 14 corner road course. We're gonna have stages. Stage one, 15 laps, stage two, 20. Final stage, very long at 47 laps. Fuel window, 30 to 32 laps, but very important, guys, no yellow. The stage will end, points will be awarded. We'll keep racing under green. Yeah, one thing that's new this year is a modified restart zone. They relocated the restart zone because there was so much chaos into turn one, the drivers really couldn't avoid it. So they moved it here, Junior, to kind of spread the field apart, but there's still going to be chaos into turn one. Yeah, we saw how it worked yesterday in the Xfinity race and at other tracks where they've done this. It's been successful. We've seen way too many bad, nasty pileups late in the race down in turn one, taking drivers out of contention. Probably we're going to see some contact and drama still today, but nothing like we've seen before. And I want to mention the uniqueness. They're able to change lanes and start racing the second they leave that restart zone. So if you do see somebody before they get to the start finish line changing lanes and racing right away, that happens because that's the new rule here at Indy. That's right. Let's, let's see it happen right now. Here they come into the start zone from Indy. We're racing on the road course. Suarez jumps out to a good start. Three car lengths entering turn number one. Tyler Reddick in second, but a great battle for third as they enter turn one. And we're still going to see the aggressive dive bombs. Look at that's contact SVG down on the inside there, trying to make passes early. Further back, I think Todd Gittleman got into Brad Keselowski. Both of them got through there, but lost some positions. Now almost wide right there through four. Now side by side through five and six. This doesn't work. Chase Elliott thinks better of it. Gives up momentum to the five car Larson now to the inside. Now Larson will be on the outside of turn seven. Battling for fourth back there. Reddick putting the pressure on for the lead. Saw Christopher Bell working, working to the outside. Fighting for position. Larson and Ben Gisbergen right around them. That was a lot of contact for, for SVG and, and several other cars down in turn one. You hate to see that on the very first lap. We talked about the chaos on turn one. The restart zone is going to help, but not take it all away, right? And the intensity is going to continue to pick up in the third stage. Here we go. Christopher Bell right there. See, SVG has to, re has to connect the correct the car back into the 20. That really makes him the meat of the sandwich. And to be clear, you're racing against cup regulars on their ballpark. And I'm telling you, if you get if you run into those guys, they're not going to put up with it very long at all. Patience will be low. And you see at the very, very top of the screen, William Byron coming to pit road, serving that penalty. Steve, you touched on this. Dave? So here comes William Byron. As you see the field now pouring down into turn number one. Everybody looking pretty clean there, even with a couple of dive bombs. But as he serves his penalty, crew chief Rudy Fugel told me it's a good thing because we'll be in clean air after this. We can learn about our race car. It's obviously a bad thing because we're very far behind. As you see lots of action, they need a caution to catch back up to the field. Yeah, Louis Kobayashi gets turned around in the 67. This is a third 23-11. And uh, third 23-11 entry is Justin Haley big off. Driver's left, that's out of five and six, gets to the driver's left, heavy contact for Haley. Man, I can't wait to see how this happened. That was a high speed crash right there. He's gonna be able to drive the car away. The tire barrier doing a lot of good yeah, work there. Away. Big contact with the tire barrier. Let's look again what happened. I was side by side. That's a very part, narrow part of the racetrack through five and six. Logano jumps the curbs and ends up getting contact with Haley pushes Haley out of the, in the grass, and now Haley's just along for the ride. Watch as he hits these tire barriers. Those things are great when you hit them head on, but you, when you hit them sideways, it just pulls them apart from each other. We saw on the initial lap, Chase Elliott opting to not do that through that corner, not go side by side through there. Now we see the replay, the 67. Kobayashi gets a little contact there from the 51 car. Andy Lally got into the 67 there. Let's ride along with Kamui. Yeah, Kamui's gonna be pretty frustrated with that. You know, it's, you, you, look, you, you gotta, you expect them to come in and race with respect, but you should give them a little respect too. Probably not as much as he was hoping for right there. 
First caution comes out early, and it's for that right there. You see Justin Haley and all the damage to the 31. Logano gets into him, sends him off track, and into the tire barrier on lap two at Indy. Japan's Kamui Kobayashi uh, behind the wheel of the 67 making his first ever start in the Cup Series and NASCAR a dream of his to be able to do this from a very young boy back in Japan had dreams of being in NASCAR. Yeah when we talked to him this week super excited said he was real worried about the small details he hopes he doesn't mess those up. That's going to be fun to watch as he learns over the course of the race. So Kamui Kobayashi makes his first career NASCAR Cup Series start here in Indianapolis to prepare for this weekend. Kobayashi tested the number 67 Toyota Genuine Parts Camry TRD at VIR, Virginia International Raceway, back in July, and has also participated in multiple simulator sessions at TRD in Salisbury, North Carolina. The Toyota driver, Tyler Reddick, was present at the VIR test and has been a huge asset to Kamui. And today he is living out his dream, competing in a NASCAR Cup Series race. Kamui Kobayashi, to the attention of his crew, will be back for the restart.
NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR is brought to you by Sunoco, fueling victories for 20 years as the official fuel of NASCAR. And by Verizon, the network America relies on. See all smiles for Scott Dixon. It's a combo weekend here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway and the road course. He was able to get back to victory lane yesterday. And so impressive to see him uh, now a six-time champion and continuing to win, dominate races, look so good. Yeah, he's eternal. It's incredible. Got an opportunity to be put through strategy out in the lead and was able to hang on to it. Um, just at his age, to be as good and as fast as he is is simply impressive and, and we're watching you know, generational talent. So sort of in the twilight of his career, how many more can he win? Yeah, he's won in 19 straight years, and the, the heartbreak of motorsports, Graham Rahal finished second, had an extremely fast car, just kind of ran out of time. Uh, felt bad for him, but what a great race. An Australian driver giving a little international feel to IndyCar. Well, also a very international feel here in NASCAR. Seven different countries are represented today with Shane Van Gisbergen of New Zealand. You've got Mike Rockenfeller out of Germany, then Brody Kostecki of Australia. Throw in Daniel Suarez, a regular here in the Cup Series from Mexico, Kamui Kobayashi of Japan, Jensen Button from England, and then 33 drivers making out the field, all from right here in the United States. So a very international field. And when you say international field, a lot of times you'll say, well, he's from this country, this country. Those drivers are dominant in their countries and are famous from their country. So a very international flavor to this field today. We ride along with the freeway.com on board. Daniel Suarez looking back. He will once again be on the inside, and Reddick will restart on his outside. There's the enhanced health. Number 91 of Shane Van Gisbergen. Well, we saw one start from this restart area. We're about to see another restart. Steve, what are we expecting? Well, I think you're going to, Dale mentioned, we're going to see rice, racing right away. Why it calms things down at turn one, it does anything but right here leaving the zone. One, green flag, green flag, green flag, green. Two by two, not as big a jump that time for Daniel Suarez. As Reddick's able to stay right behind him, now he's changed his lanes. He's got Chase Elliott right there on the inside. This is the second restart for these drivers. Look how more intense. Oh, oh contact the 22 into the back of his teammate, Ryan Blaney. Logano turns around, and we'll see if everybody's able to get around him. He keeps it going, and we stay green. You can see how more intense that restart was than the very first. And here they come in that really tight complex. Are they going to get single file? Yes, Kyle Larson did not make the mistake that the ties did before and run through here side by side. It's been quite a day for the 22 of Joey Logano involved in the Justin Haley incident and now has an issue into turn one. You have to wonder if the damage or the contact to the left front and that wreck with Justin Haley affected the ability to break into turn one. You see the 34 of Michael McDowell now pressuring Suarez, running in that second oh. spot, and out wide is the five of Kyle Larson. Eight was underneath him, wrecking. Kyle Busch gathers it up. Christopher Bell now peeking to the right. This is action, man. The 34 trying to outbreak Suarez for the lead. Suarez going to battle on this inside now. Coming into this turn. Turn 12, now into turn 13. McDowell's on the inside, has a preferred line and takes the spot away. 14, a new leader at Indy. Michael McDowell out front. Yeah, good pace in practice. Suarez has good momentum behind him, though. Can he try to repass him into turn one? It's the replay from turn one. Logano's coming from way back. That car had no chance, and I don't think it was performing in the braking zone like he expected. Locked up the rear tires there. Truex to the inside here of the 12 car. Yeah, a little contact looked like there between Blaney and Truex through one. I think it's impossible to go through turn one side to side without making contact, it seems. Blaney's going to get that spot up. But I was talking about McDowell. He had practice speed. No surprise to see this car run well, but also drive up and take the lead. Front row motorsports leading. Right, incredible, Kim. 
And Dale, when I talked with Michael this morning, he was absolutely fired up, very confident, said we have speed in the car, especially on the long run. And he said you only get so many opportunities at wins and even top fives in this series because the field is so deep. We cannot waste that opportunity today. Expect us to be very aggressive attacking the track and very aggressive on pit road and with strategy. Yeah, and one of Michael's concerns is pit road. You know, can this young, this little team take on these giants and have the pit stops that they need? Execution in every area of the race is what Michael told me he was concerned about. And it was announced earlier this week that Front Row Motorsports was going to make sure their drivers stayed in place through next year, so their contracts extended, and that includes Todd Gilliland. Well, with one bubble driver leading, trouble for another bubble driver, Ty Gibbs, just above the bubble. Watch this chaos. Smoke, we saw the 22, but keep watching. Right-hand side of your screen, there it is. The black number 54 kind of gets spit out right here, riding on board with SVG, a little contact. And then right across the bumper, SVG aggressive early. And in supercars, they told us Brody and SVG both said the bumping on bumpers front to back is not allowed in supercars. But you can hit a guy on the side, so that would not have gone over well in supercars. I don't think it's going to go over too well in NASCAR. <laughs> no, Ty Gibbs is going to have to be pretty frustrated to be this early in the race, I think. Well, there was heavy contact with him and Christopher Bell, so I'd be concerned about that. Also, Christopher Bell's car has been ran into by multiple cars already in his first few laps. Here's Ty Gibbs working to the inside of Kevin Harvick in that four. You see how far behind the 54 is after that spin, and I think that's what pushed Joey Logano so hard in this race. You got to get track position. I mean, then the start of the race, the restarts are an opportunity to do it. it. Did not work out for Joey Logano, and he's actually behind this group of cars. Also, right in the mix here, we saw the 33 of Brody Kostecki. And Brody having to start at the back with a backup car had a pretty good qualifying run. But now the backup car's got about as much experience as he does. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Dave. And so, Rick, you got to understand, Brody Gostecki, even though he's a superstar in supercars, he didn't even get a test like a lot of the drivers who don't run in the series did before he raced here. His first laps were at speed in practice, and he only got a couple of those because they had a mechanical issue. So Brody's learning on the fly. Right now, he's about to get dive-bombed down into turn one. And it's Kamui Kobayashi who goes by, but he goes a little bit too deep into turn number one, and he'll lose a couple spots. Luckily, one unlike Chicago, right here. There's room to run off. There's room to make mistakes. I think that's why we're seeing more mistakes from all these new drivers in NASCAR. They're just try, trying to get too much out of the car, but understanding now that the car doesn't have that kind of performance down into turn one. Fortunately, there was a place for him to go. Look yeah. at the gap in between cars right here. If not, that would have been a big wreck. So Kobayashi needs to recognize there's some learning to do. Let's back the pace down a little bit. It's a long race. Burn this car a little bit and then go on attack. See the Coke Zero Sugar on board of Joey Logano. Again, Logano has been involved in two incidents already in this young race. Tough camera. I'm not sure that one was still going to be there after they uh, <laughs> contacted turn one. You mentioned the long race. Again, seven laps still to go before the end of stage one and a reminder there will not be a caution at the end of the stage they will continue to run but there will be points awarded to that top 10 so when you look at mcdowell suarez chase elliott all these drivers alex bowman drivers that are looking to make the playoffs those points very important here's bowman dropping a spot to van gisbergen A little Contact. bumping there from Bowman. Inside, inside. Bowman trying to take the spot right back from Shane. They stay side by side, and then down that long back stretch into turn seven. We'll see how aggressive SVG gets with Bowman. He's under attack. Car not really having the pace that he was hoping for right now. Chase Briscoe on the 14 gets by SVG. It's been an eventful nine laps already for Joey Logano. Turn one, big hit into the back of Ryan Blaney.
Vegas fans, when in Las Vegas, stay where the racers stay at the South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa. Your ultimate pit stop on the Las Vegas Strip. South Point, everything you want, all under one roof. You're watching the NASCAR Cup Series Verizon 200 at the Brickyard. Take a look at a little contact being made between a couple drivers, including Andy Lally and Ty Gibbs. Yeah, Andy Lally and Ty Gibbs are going at it. And this went on for quite a while. Ty giving it to the 51 just a little bit. Then this is down the front straightaway. More contact. Andy Lally says, no, I don't like it. Now Ty Gibbs has got to try to pass him all over again. Finally does it. That's going on, though, all through the field. Maybe not to that extent, but it's been pretty crazy. Ty dominated the Xfinity race yesterday and won it. See Kevin Harmick hit the pit road. Kim. And crew chief Rodney Childers told me their only option today because of how bad they qualified was to do something completely different strategy-wise. And for them, that is being one of the first ones to make a stop under green. He said he has good drive off, still needs a little bit more turn. That was the same issue they had throughout practice. Four tires, Sunoco Field with a slight air pressure adjustment on those good years. Strategy at road course racing is a little different than ovals because you can pit like Kevin Harvick is here with no fear of losing a lap. So the concept is come in, fill up, and put tires on in case a yellow comes out. If everybody else has to come to pit road, you can leapfrog them. So you kind of run the race backwards. This is aggressive for sure, a little outside their fuel window. Uh, but I agree with what crew chief Rodney Childers said. Hey, when you have no track position, you have to do something different. Now McDowell on board with Suarez chasing McDowell. I expect these two to at least run to that magical lap 15, which would be the end of stage one. Yes, Steve, I think that first caution, or the first two cautions, I should say, bought everybody a little bit more time, so they may extend that first window. But yes, the window open right now, and it should just be a two-stop race for all the cars and crew chiefs and pit crews as well, Steve. So how has no cautions at the end of the stages really changed the game on road courses? Well, when you know there's a caution, it's really just a decision whether you take track position or the points. Now, not knowing where the cautions are, you have to really kind of call it a little old school. You want to pit nice and early in case a yellow comes out. Uh, but if you pit too early, you either put yourself in a fuel situation or you have old tires on and you slip and slide for the cars on fresher tires. And want to take a look at the Xfinity fastest lap. It's Daniel Suarez who had won the pull on lap 10. He turned the fastest lap of anyone and Suarez right now running in the second spot. But an average of over 98 miles per hour around this 14 turn, just under two and a half mile road course. Saw William Byron had to serve a penalty at the start of the race in the back of the pack, trying to work himself up through. And you can see that very narrow part of the racetrack. And five and six contact with the 78 car of Josh Balicki. A lot of aggression early in this race. It does seem like there is a lot of intensity early in this race as well. As we see McDowell still about three, four car lengths in front of Suarez. Dave. Shane Van Ginsbergen in 10th place. Now he does not have a perfect race car. Listen to these two radio transmissions. The uh, throttle pedal is a little bit sticky at the moment too. On throttle crack, it's quite hard to push and then it cracks forward to 10%. So hopefully that doesn't hurt the tires too much. If it starts getting worse, make sure you let us know. I'm struggling with the rear, got no rear, and the throttle pedal is making the initial drive very hard. Getting the initial drive very hard, sticky throttle pedal drivers. How bad is that on a road course? Well, you just Dave, can't. other cars coming down pit road. You see Ryan Blaney, who's really said nothing of the contact with his teammate Joey Logano on the track. Here's the benefit of doing this, Steve. There's one lap to go in the stage, as you can see on the left hand side of your screen. You're going to pit first, get those tires on before everybody else. The bad side of that, though, you're going to give up all these stage points that McDowell, Suarez, Elliott, all those guys will get. But Jonathan Assler making the call to bring Ryan Blaney down pit road. It's a different, you know, we talk about agendas. You know, Ryan Blaney, he's won a race. So he knows he's moving forward in the playoffs. He's concerned about trying to win this race. We see Joey Logano joining his Penske teammate of Ryan Blaney on pit road. The battle up top for this race or stage win. Suarez is continuing to put the pressure on McDowell, not letting this be an easy cruise. And staying within a couple seconds is Chase Elliott, the man who absolutely needs a win to make the playoffs. He's making a good run for it this early in the race. Good speed in the nine car. 
monumental start for Front Row Motorsports. This will be the first ever stage win for Front Row Motorsports, as well as the first stage win for Michael McDowell. So a big stage win there. And again, there won't be a caution, but he will get the 10 points for winning the stage and a playoff point. Yeah, big for that team where they are battling among the bubble as well for the 99 car. Critical points early in stage one. And this is new this year, no yellow. We continue to talk about it because it does change kind of the outlook of the race. And actually also puts more value on qualifying, right? What you're seeing right here from McDowell and Suarez and Elliott, all these cars that had track position to start the race holding onto it. To wrap up what Dave's talking about with Shane Van Gisbergen, it, the, the throttle is hard to mash. And when he does mash it, it ends up going too far. When he has, it's hard to push, but when it does engage, he's getting more, you know, say if he wants to mash it 20% and just kind of barely get into the throttle, it's going to 40 or going to 50 and spinning and, and, and hurting the rear tires. So that's gonna be tr uh, tough to fix. I don't think they can fix it. Um, so he'll have to deal with that all day long, Marty. Couple cars on pit road. Chris Buescher back-to-back wins and struggling so far today. As predicted, car a little bit too free for Buescher. No stage points there in stage one, but a pretty significant adjustment trying to tighten up the car for Chris Buescher. And I think pit road is about to get very busy, guys. As we see the leaders stay on the racetrack, Chase chases them as well, but it's a split. Reddit comes to pit road as well. So the concern with staying on the racetrack is if a yellow comes out, anyone who has pitted is not going to pit again. So if you have to pit under the yellow, then you instantly give up your track position. And it's it, normally we see everybody kind of pitting a one or two lap window. This is very interesting, right? This has now basically been a five or six lap window of cars trickling two or three time cars at a time onto pit road. Reddick slow on pit road all the way down to his pit stall. Almondinger as well. Stucky and Byron all on pit road. Marty. Yeah, this is interesting with these wide windows, Steve. It's going to be interesting to see where all these guys blend back out. A.J. Allmendinger saying lateral grip is okay in his car. He's on the bottom of the screen. He needs more front turn. Kind of the opposite for Tyler Reddick saying the car just way too free. Billy Scott told his crew after their rough pit stop at the end of the race at Michigan, hey, just slow down this weekend. We have a good car. Let's just have simple stops, Dave. Here's something Brody Kostecki has never done. Live pit stops in NASCAR. He hit his marks perfectly. Perfectly. He'll get four Goodyear tires at Sunoco Fuel. Also, William Byron in the 24 is on pit road. He'll be leaving again with a full tank of Sunoco Fuel. And McDowell still has to come to pit road. You're watching the NASCAR Cup Series. Rising 200 at the Brickyard.
NASCAR Fantasy Live lets you keep tabs on your fantasy lineup throughout the race. You can adjust your picks until the end of stage two to maximize your score. Visit NASCAR.com slash fantasy or you can select the fantasy icon on the mobile app leaderboard to make in-race changes. So a lot of drivers making the way onto pit road cycling through and there's a lot of road to be gained when you come on to pit road. Well, right here you see Suarez and McDowell. They're flipped. McDowell was leading and now battle between the nine and the five. The nine ran a couple laps longer and I think ended up costing a little time to Larson. This wasn't really that close before the green flag cycle. I was interested to see that five car trying that pass in the braking zone on the outside. If he could position himself on the right side of the nine for the next few corners, he might have been able to take the spot away. But right now, it's like the five of Larson just a little bit quicker than Chase. So if you go back to who we think is going to be the leader of the race through the cycle, it was McDowell at the beginning. Well, coming to Pit Road, Pit Road speed, there's an access road, but Pit Road speed does not start until the yellow line. Look at how conservative the 34 slows down. Bravo, Daniel Suarez. Look how much is gained. That's a great opportunity right here. Daniel takes every bit of it. You can see his car was out of control. And then look what happens at the end of pit road. That little bit of gain by Suarez and a little bit quicker stop. And they take the lead away from McDowell. When pit stop cycle through, there are still 11 that are in front of those two that have not come to pit road under this most recent cycle of pit stops. And that was, remember, that was what McDowell told me his concern was, was being able to run the race and executing everything perfectly. And that was not just on the pit crew. That was on him as well. There was more for him to get on pit road. Suarez did better and lost the spot. Yeah, and a couple guys getting speeding penalties and uh, two of them uh, kind of famous in the fact that uh, Jensen Button, he normally pushes a button when he comes onto pit road, so he doesn't have to worry normally about speeding. They got a speeding penalty. So did Mike Rockenfeller in the 42, as well as the seven of Corey LaJoy. All for speeding on pit road. Marty. Rick Chase Elliott has already pitted. You saw that a moment ago. And at the end of that run, Chase Elliott was the fastest car. So Alan Gustin, Steve, made the call to leave him out one lap longer. Do you think that benefited the nine to stay out there and run one more lap in clean traffic? Looking at the racetrack, no, I think it cost the, the nine time. I think the cars that came in and pitted earlier um, actually had a little bit more efficient stops using the five as Larson as the example. The nine had a little bit of space to Larson, and now Larson is only a few car lengths behind him. Chase Elliott's about two seconds now behind McDowell, and they were a lot closer when pit stop cycle started. The most important thing is he came from third, he's still third, a little bit of time on track. You expect there's going to be a yellow at some point. It's, it's more... Don't make a mistake, you listed those three drivers that were caught speeding. I mean, that just puts you so far behind for the rest of the day. Again, a reminder, right now, the top seven still have not come to pit road at all. Then eighth, ninth, and tenth, they came on lap three and lap four when the caution was out. They still have to come. And Steve, how far can you go on a, a tank of fuel? So we know they can go 30 to 32 pretty comfortably. We had a few pace laps, three of them. Um, but I also think that the teams are holding that fuel mileage pretty close to the best. I think they could probably run a little further than 32 if they have to. I think it's just a play of being most efficient on tires, so I expect the leaders to pit somewhere around probably lap 25 or 26. Now getting a little bit bigger in the mirror for Suarez in this break of zone at turn 11. As these two start to worry each other, they start to slow down just a little bit. The last lap on the racetrack, the nine of Chase Elliott about three tenths quicker. He's going to start to creep into this battle as will the five, and then also the fastest car on the racetrack the last time by, Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch right now running in the 15th position, but again, that's relative to the 10 drivers that still have yet to come to pit road. And not these, two, these two, Suarez and McDowell, when they came in, they were just below that cut line of making it into the playoffs. And so there's the battle within the battle, obviously, the potential for a race win locks you into the playoffs, but then every point matters in the big picture of getting into the playoffs. Well, you can see how tight it is. Bubba Wallace, he stayed on the racetrack currently. He looks pretty good in the playoffs. Road courses have been a concern for him. him. McDowell, Suarez, we saw Gibbs had that trouble earlier. Almondinger has not had the pace we normally see from him. 
But as we watch these two guys, the car that is getting closer to them is that nine of Chase Elliott. He is actually faster than they are. He is starting to run them down. See Martin Truex Jr. on pit road, so he will give up that third spot. Kim. And he was happy with the car yesterday in practice. Not the case today. Told the team he has no turn or drive off. Very hard to get the gas down. They will put air pressure adjustments on those four fresh Goodyear tires. As you see the crew to the left side. Remember, left side first. These choreographies here. A little bit backwards. Four tires. Sunoco Fuel, Marty, for Martin Drex Jr. Dale in our pre-race show, Dale Earnhardt Jr. talked about how Bubba Wallace and his crew chief, Booty, Booty Barker, have been stocked points over the last few weeks. In fact, in the last three races, they have earned the fifth most points. And Booty told me this morning, I'm going to do the opposite of what everybody else does today just to try something. And no, road courses are not Bubba Wallace's strength, so leaving him out a little bit longer. Wallace will pit this time by, though. But he reminded me, hey, we finished fifth in this race last year. You never know what can happen. I love this idea because you leave him out in some clear track. You're talking about, when we talk about strategy for the win, that's one thing that's what the 99 and the 34 is doing and I'm not saying Bubba Wallace cannot win but he would tell you that this is just not his forte he is learning the road courses this is not his best stuff his mindset coming in very important he's gained a bunch of points over 30 points in the last two ovals you can't give them all back at the first road course that's really what this 23 car is doing running a little long trying to take some of the pressure off versus Look at this pressure pack battle right here, right? Suarez and McDowell, they're thinking we could win. Chase Elliott right back there is thinking, I'm sick of top fives at the road courses. I want to get a win. Yeah, the fastest of these three cars has been Chase Elliott, as now we see Shane Van Gisbergen on pit road once again, Dave. The Chicago Street Race winner is coming down pit road. His car is pretty good right now, except for that sticky throttle pedal issue. So he'll go for four tires and fuel here and see if he can get back into the mix. They liked his lap times a lot, Marty, right near the end of his run. So they asked Bubba Wallace how the car was as he comes down pit road, and he said, I just need a little more lateral grip. So they'll lose about 49 seconds here on pit road. So that's put Bubba about 15. So a solid day so far for the 23. Exactly what they hoped for. Exactly what they needed. Well, fans, NASCAR and the premier partners want to thank you. Visit NASCAR.com slash thank you fans to learn how you can win an exclusive diamond experience just for being a fan.
building the next generation of U.S. Navy submarines means stable, sustaining jobs across the country. If you want to work with purpose, we're looking for you. Visit buildsubmarines.com for career and training opportunities. Bell out in front of the field here. Austin Dillon running in second. Denny Hamlin is third. Those three have not been to pit lane yet, as well as Ryan Keselowski, who was on pit lane on lap three, but he is currently running in the fourth position. Then Suarez and McDowell, we knew those two were going to cycle to the front. Uh, they have been battling for position. Uh, once Suarez come off, came off of pit road in front of McDowell, McDowell has not been able to get by him, but the gap is very close. A couple guys who have been watching from Victory Circle, and they're very familiar with that, is DJ and Hinch. And guys, were you expecting this aggression so early in this race? Yeah, that's a great question, Rich. I think that the cup drivers always wonder, when they have drivers that they haven't competed with very much, how they're going to treat them. And Hinch, is it something that drivers, when they come, they watch what happens in this series and drivers put each other around? Is that something they feel like they need to do? Well, here's the thing. I think those drivers want to be respectful. They don't want to another guy's turf. They don't want to make a bad reputation. We've seen a lot of aggression from them, but I honestly think some of it is inadvertent aggression. They're still learning the limits of these race cars. We saw Kobayashi go long down a turn. Next time we come to you guys, you're going to have to be indoors because with the cars rocketing by you on the front stretch, you are so difficult to hear. But great stuff down there, guys. We appreciate it. Battle right here picking up between these group. Chase Elliott lost the touch to these two a few laps ago trying to get around Ty Dillon. Now has closed the gap back up. The 99's missing some corners. You see it right there, a little bit wide. McDowell trying to capitalize on it, and right back behind them is Chase Elliott, so hungry for a win in 2023. Marty. Could today be the day for Chase Elliott? It might be. Chase Elliott has not won a road course race with this next-gen car, but they are so quick, especially at the end of runs. I talked to Alan Gustafson this morning. He said, listen, we focus on every race, but we have put a lot into Indianapolis and into Watkins Glen next week as well. They expect to be even better at Watkins Glen next week. So, Junior, do you think the road courses are Chase Elliott's best path to the playoffs for the win? Yeah, absolutely. He's showing great speed today you see the five car of Kyle Larson he missed turn 11 and had to go over and park in the runoff so he did not get penalized he rejoins the field but we're seeing and I know this is not the battle for the lead right here it should be once the cycle goes through the nine car looks like the best car on the racetrack right now this is Larson in the larger screen he's gonna miss oh big lock up with the right front just not gonna make the corner so he goes over here he's got to stop Comes a complete stop, good job. NASCAR's gonna watch that and make sure you do that properly. He does it. And he blends back into traffic. That lockup though on the right front is concerning on the flat spot tire, how that's gonna affect the handling and can the tire make it the, the full run here. We continue to watch this battle. Uh, Ray Joe on the 34, trying to put the pressure on. Suarez has been missing some apexes. His car just not quite handling and turning the way he wants more pressure the 34 can put on he might work him into a mistake chase elliott watches behind for an opportunity to get around both drivers and steve with the strategy that we've already seen guys that had come to pit road around lap 17 18 16 how far are they going to go how far will they stretch it and how far do they need to go to make it to the end well i think if they get to you know 32 33 to go they're going to feel very good about it as we see austin dillon come to pit road now you know, he's run 28 green flag laps plus the pace laps. So I expect Suarez and McDowell in those cars, they're really looking for, you know, 32, 33 laps to go in the race. Get firing down into turn one. Suarez just in front of Michael McDowell and then Chase Elliott. McDowell staying within about a car length of Suarez, but not able to put as much pressure on that 99 as he would like to.
Chase Elliott after breaking a bone in a ski boarding incident earlier in the year. He was out for six weeks and then a penalty for rough, rough driving put him out for another week. And so missing seven races, seven races out from behind the wheel of the car has put him into a hole. And so he is looking to get out of that hole potentially today if he could get to victory lane. That miss by the five, we showed him miss the corner. It ended up costing, I believe, really just three spots. I think he lost a spot to, to Bush, uh, to Reddick, and to Briscoe for cars that are on his strategy. He also lost a spot to Ty Dillon. Ty still has to come to pit road in that 77 on the left side of your screen. You see he's in the eighth position. Good lap there. Really good back section. Listen into the radio there. Suarez mentioned a good lap, also a great lap. Gene Van Gisbergen uh, was the fastest car on the track just a lap ago. Yeah, the cars have pitted later. While tires aren't a gigantic advantage, much like, you know, in Sonoma, they would be a bigger advantage. This track relatively smooth. New tires are still better, um, and the fresher tires uh, definitely are showing up. Good laps. Steve, what strategy is Denny Hamlin playing? Denny Hamlin right now hasn't been to pit road. So he has no track position, so he's just going to run as long as he can to keep the freshest tires on versus the field. If the caution comes out right now, he knows he has to pit, and 10 or 15 or 20 may stay out, but the back 10 cars are going to pit anyway. He's going to cycle out kind of mid-pack, which is where he was. Marty, he doesn't expect to drive all the way to the front. Well, I would think he would hope he could drive to the front, but that would be awfully hard today. Track position is the key for everything. You guys mentioned Kyle Larson. He lost those spots back to 11th right now. Here's the thing, Junior. You mentioned how tough a flat spot is on the car. Larson said it is definitely flat flatted on that right front. They told him to take it easy on the brakes, and he said it's worse in the left-handers for some reason. So why is a flat spot, Junior, so bad for the driver? Well, it actually squares the tire, and so the next time you mash the brake pedal in a braking zone it wants to hang up on that flat spot and slide the tire again it's really you know you you will have a small vibration that might hurt the turn the ability of the car to, to to grip the front and roll through the center of the corner but mainly the biggest problem is trying to brake deep into the corner you uh you know you can't it'll hang up on that flat spot there's a spin right there the 16th car AJ Allmendinger. Yeah, Allmendinger had a big spin. Big this is there. over in the, the NASCAR oval number one. So this is, he must have had a big issue coming in to turn 11. Yeah, he is way off the racetrack right there. You see the fire coming out of him. He's trying to get it fired back up. That's the, actually the exhaust pipe. Actually, I think he's spun out of the final corner here, turn 13. Yeah. Car just come out from under him. I don't know how that could happen. There you go. He's not been happy around, with people. this race car all weekend. We came here expecting him to be a contender for this win, but he just has not had speed. Here it is. Contact. 12, he crashed. So, Jeff, that was him jumping on the radio, said, if I get back to that 12, he's getting crashed. Yeah, right they must have. got into him. You know, and you have to imagine these, this is something that's been going on for a couple corners. Blaney just, Blaney just doesn't turn, guys, for no reason. You have to go back and look and see if there's anything going on between the, the drivers in the past few corners there. Denny Hamlin out in front still has to come to pit road once it cycles through. It'll be Suarez and McDowell fighting for the lead here at Indy.
let's see which drivers are on the move. Brought to you by Ashley Furniture. The two that are running up front, Brad Kozlowski running second right now, Denny Hamlin running in the top spot. Both have gained 31 and 21 positions respectively. So same goal for both of these cars. We are now closing in. This will be two laps to go in stage two. Remember, not racing to a yellow, but racing to the end of the stage, which will award points. The 11 of Denny Hamlin's yet to be on pit road, so this is an impressive stretch of his original fuel tank. We did have a yellow earlier for three extra caution flag laps. The six of Brad Kozlowski, Dave, he pitted at lap three in this race. I think these two are battling for this stage. That's right, Denny has the fourth most playoff points of anybody, so one more playoff point if he can win this stage. About eight laps ago, Chris Gabart, his crew chief, asked him to go down the front straight, straight away at only 70% throttle. That was a couple of laps of that, and then 60% throttle, and then when Keselowski got to him, he said, okay, race him. We don't want the six to pass us. We want this stage win, Tim. Well, Dave, a great strategy call by crew chief Matt McCall for Brad Keselowski. They started 20 season and only one driver getting in on points. This battle right here, it ain't over yet. We're coming to one to go in the stage. Then behind them, you have Suarez, McDowell, Chase Elliott. I don't think they'll get there, but they're coming fast. About a, about a second, two tenths a lap. One more lap to go in stage two. And again, a caution won't come out, but they will earn points. After this lap, the top 10, and you see Denny Hamlin sliding into turn number one. The pressure being put on by Keselowski. He's got to worry about Keselowski, and he's also getting that information about his fuel. He has to switch the car to be able to, to be able to get another, a little bit of reserve fuel. They're telling him he shouldn't need it, but he's got that on his mind. That is working on his mind as well as looking behind him and seeing the six car. And remember, if they want to get these points, they've got to cross the stripe, then make it another lap until they're able to come to pit road. And Denny Hamlin running at the Oh, nine. Denny missed the corner. Ah, sorry, he missed the corner big right there, slid the rear tires. Here comes there Brad. Brad offline in the third, his tires are dirty. Here comes the 99, they're all right there. How much will Suarez wait? Or will he be aggressive early? He looks to the inside now. Be patient here, man. This this is early in this race. I don't know if this is that critical. Back, oh, Brad's going to miss the right corner. Here, here comes the 34 McDowell. McDowell gets by the 99 of Suarez. McDowell now will be leading once these two come to pit road. And Brad losing oh, points, clear, valuable clear, points clear. for the six. Stage win is going to go to Denny Hamlin. Fifth stage win this year for him. Now, Rick, to your point, as we see the nine make a big move, he's going to look three wide into turn one. The 11 of Hamlin needs to make it all the way back around to come to pit road. And again, very tight on fuel for Denny Hamlin. A lot of respect so far between these two through this very tight complex. Chase Elliott clears Suarez. So now all, all of that. Of you here. All of that right there costs Suarez a few spots to two cars that he's going to be racing for the win here. And you see how many points through the stages these drivers have earned in the lower left corner of your screen. Very important for McDowell, who is not in on points. Suarez is not in. Chase Elliott not in. So now flip. If you're Bubba Wallace, look now. Plus 30. You haven't done anything wrong. You came in with over 50 points, and these two cars behind you are having career road course days. You have to wonder if the 23 knows. I know they know it. Are they communicating it to Bubba, or are they letting him just stick with the plan? Again, McDowell is going to take the top spot away from Denny Hamlin, and McDowell back out front at Indy. What a great move by McDowell a lap ago to get this spot. Just. A lot of patience exhibited it. Here goes the 11 car, Hamlin on to pit road. Same with Brad Kozlowski, also coming to pit road now. Now Chase Elliott has moved up to that second spot. 
So it's McDowell, Elliott, and Suarez. One, two, three. Kim. And mission accomplished for Brad Keselowski, although they would have liked to have won that stage or finished at least second, still bank some stage points to pad their playoff position. Brad, super happy with the race car. No major complaints. Feel like they have a very solid car underneath them. Four tires to no go fuel for Brad Keselowski, Dave. A masterful job of strategy and driving for the 11 team. He'll wait on the Sunoco fuel to make sure that car is full of fuel before he goes anywhere. No changes requested by the driver. Again, that one very valuable playoff point awarded to the 11 team. Now the 11 and the 6 did the gamble, scored the points. Now a caution would be perfect. They're full of fuel and the freshest tire in the field. You're watching the NASCAR Cup Series Verizon 200 at the Brickyard. NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Save with your bundle, auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. And by Toyota. Let's go places. Speaking of going places, Michael McDowell out in front and almost missing the turn there as the nine of Chase Elliott will close the gap even more. This nine car is the real deal today he showed up at practice showed up in qualifying and lap after lap continues to inch his way into this battle now you see Brad Keselowski and Denny Hamlin with those fresher tires trying to recover work their way back up through traffic so everyone has made a pit stop now so what you see for the running order is basically one stop required for everyone right you see McDowell then you have Chase Elliott right off the rear bumper of Chase Elliott the 99 of Suarez as we were at break, this eight has inched his way in. He's kind of joining this fight. You're going to see the whole front stretch kind of line up, right? Then behind the eight, you have a little bit bigger gap back to Reddick. I think he's still a player. Bowman is behind Reddick. That's another car looking for a win. Oh, this traffic in front of McDowell is going to be tough. Eric Jones in the 43, right in front of race leader Michael McDowell. We heard some potential transmission issues for the 43. We haven't got that confirmed, but 
Some whispers on the radio. I don't know if that's the pace issue for the 43, but definitely touch off the pace. Oh, Marty. So Rick, working lap 40 here. So Steve, when would you make that final stop of the day if you're the leaders? I'm hearing crew chiefs asking, how's the handling in your car? Pit crews kind of stretching out down here on pit road. Seems like we're getting close to what could be the final stop of the day. We just saw Danny Hamlin go, what, 35 green plus some pace laps, or 33 green with some pace laps and some caution. So I would imagine we're gonna see cars on pit road. It's 43 to go right now in the race. You know, 35 to go is probably super aggressive. They'd probably like to see 33 or 32 to go. You basically, I, I think it would be hard pressed to pit outside your fuel window, probably right at it, or at least maybe within one lap of it. Uh, the risk just really isn't worth the reward if you're one of these three cars who already has track position. McDowell has been out front 15 laps already today. Chase Briscoe running back in the seventh position, Marty. Boy, what a day for Mitchell, Indiana's Chase Briscoe, who loves this racetrack. Came here when he was a kid, and in fact, in ride arounds, as we ride on board with the highpoint.com on board camera, he said for the first time he came here in ride arounds from driver's introductions, he cried. That's how much this racetrack means to him. He has an Xfinity Series win. He needs a win in the cup side to be able to make the playoffs, having a terrific showing up in the seventh position. Said he needs a little more rear lateral grip. The longer they run, that's what he loses. That rear lateral grip makes it very hard. When you want to go to the throttle, you can't go to the throttle until the rear of the car settles down. If you try to do it, it's just going to spin those rear tires right here. You want to be wide open, get to it quickly, lift off the gas, apply that throttle really smoothly as we ride along with Chase. Progressive telemetry. Watch how smooth he is on that throttle. Wide open now. Easy on the throttle through that right-hander. Heavy braking into turn 12. Left-hander 13. Watch how smooth he is on the throttle. A little bit of throttle, a little bit of throttle, a little bit. Now wide open as he exits. Got to breathe in a little bit, coming to the front straightaway. Shifting gears, a lot going on. You have to modulate it. You can't just make those rear tires mad. They get hot, they get overheated, and then they will not make grip. Kim. So Kyle Busch currently running in the fourth position, but came on the radio and said, I don't know what's happening. I have a lot of drag. I think I broke a valve spring. So Steve, if you hear your driver saying that, what's your first reaction? Well, I'm gonna go look at the SMT data, the car data. He says it sounds or feels draggy. Look at our top speed on the straightaways. If you have an engine issue, a valve spring or a top end issue, you're going to see it at the end of this, the back stretch, the end of the front stretch. A valve spring at a track like this, I can believe it. These cars and these engines have been pretty rock solid, but with all the downshifting, it's easy to mechanically over rev, which means you downshift at too high a speed and the electronics can't stop the RPM of the motor. It's simple math. The tires are turning faster in that gear than you need. His last lap on the racetrack over a second right, slower. Keep digging for right now. We're talking to the ECR guys now. So they see or hear something. ECR is the engine provider. You can see it in the lap time. I'll listen when he comes back. That's Richard Childers, <laughs> car owner. And he loves that engine program. And he said he was going to listen. He thought he, if it was a valve spring, he would be able to hear that in the exhaust pipes when it came by him. And he's going by pit road now, so we'll see if RC did hear something that didn't sound right. Again, about a second off of what he and the leaders have been running. We see Chase Elliott with Suarez behind him about six tenths of a second. Chase Elliott is six tenths of a second behind McDowell. Again, five laps from now would be aggressive if they came to pit road. Six to seven laps, they'd be able to fit right into their fuel window. Kim? We're going to get a great look from Austin Dillon's Coca-Cola Zero Sugar on board. I talked to Austin this morning, and he said, we hope we can surprise. 
surprise people this weekend. This course has not been great for me. I've got two finishes of 30 or worse here. Right now, Austin very happy with that race car, saying he loves what they gave him this weekend. Currently running in the 15th position, and the team told me a top 15 is a solid day. A top 10 is a good day. We'll see if they can get there, break that top 10. been impressed. Austin was one of the drivers that ran a little longer, didn't pit the lap 28, while other cars pitted in the teens. Um, and you know, he's doing a really nice job, driven all the way up into the 15th position. Get Dylan running 15th, out in front, Michael McDowell. Next week on NBC USA at Peacock, defending 200 meter world champion Noah Lyles leads the stars of Team USA as they take on the best athletes from around the world at the World Track and Field Championships. It's August 20th and 23rd on NBC USA and Peacock. Bell getting by Kyle Larson, and we just saw Shane Van Gisbergen go by Kyle Larson. Yeah, he's been working on him, and finally down here. Nine, he just dives down in there to make it happen. And that's a super aggressive move. It's probably not something Larson was expecting. See right here, he just goes right. Yep. Just shortcuts the the track, and Larson's like, well, he got a spot good, now. He good did move. a good job there. I was expecting contact. You know what I mean? Typically, that'd be a pretty aggressive move, and there would be contact. Josh Balicki get turned around off the nose of Corey Joy, I believe. Sure enough, into the grass, the 78 win. Now 37 laps to go as McDowell continues to lead. Shane Van Gisbergen back in ninth, Dave. 
And Rick, this deal was not known a few weeks after the Chicago win for Shane. Crew Chief Darian Grubb told me today, we got the call about a month ago, and we didn't know if we could do it. Remember, after Chicago, these cars got significant safety updates from NASCAR. They had to cut things out. They had to put new things in, and they didn't know if they could turn this same chassis around in time. But they got help. They got expedited work done, and they got this car turned around for Shane. The creature comforts, they're all the same, but this car's been updated, and it's still fast. Yeah, he's been running some really fast laps. Some of the fastest laps in the field. Just like he did in Chicago. He you know, started that race pretty much on par with everybody, but by the end of the race, had a second on the field. Just getting better and better as he understands the performance of the car and the racetrack and what it can do. Counterpart from the V8 Supercars, Kostecki's back in 18th place, having a great day in that backup car. This battle right here, they just, the, all three of these cars and drivers are so equal right now. It's almost a game of who's gonna make a mistake. Suarez trying to put the pressure to Chase Elliott to force a mistake, Marty. And Jeff, how crazy are the NASCAR playoffs? The top three all below the cut line. Five of the top 10 below the cut line. Everyone needing points, everyone needing a win. Two laps from pit stop, Steve's there about. How do you separate yourself if you're trying to win and make your way into the playoffs as Daniel Suarez looks underneath Chase Elliott? Yeah, this battle continues. Well, you have to, first thing you have to do is not make a mistake. We've seen some speeding penalties on pit road and you kind of almost have to decide, like right here you see Chase kind of swerving, I think trying to break the draft of the 99 of Suarez. Yeah, if, the, if the handling's starting to fall away, Dale, you know, you might come a lap earlier than you want, but you need to make sure you can make it to the end on fuel. That's what I'm wondering about this nine, right there missing the curb. I don't think this car's driving so well. Looked like the best car earlier. The 99 was struggling. Now looks like it's flip-flopped a little bit. Chase barely hanging on here. This car moving around quite a bit. Oh, Suarez almost got into him. Suarez is so much better on approach to these corners, whether it's braking or what have you, but not missing a lot of apexes. And while these two fight for the second spot, McDowell has put 1.3 seconds between himself and Elliott. And this is 31 laps on this set of tires as the nine misses another corner. 35 laps to go, you see in the upper left. So if you pit here, you got to expect about the same length run. Suarez recognizes that Chase is in trouble, and so it's pressure, pressure. You see him into the back of the nine car. Didn't knock him out of the way, but hey, man, I'm here. You're holding me up. Suarez just wants to keep applying pressure on these braking zones. This is where mistakes can happen. Oh, oh, that's hard a, that's a lot road. of pressure. He sends him out of the way. Wow. Suarez on, takes the spot from Chase Elliott. I don't think Chase will be happy with that. That was excessive in my eyes, but Suarez got away with it. But now Chase says, all right, buddy, game like on, it. I owe you one. Here it is. We're riding on board when it happened. Here's what it looked like. Corner entry, that contact, that's very difficult for Chase Elliott to handle without spinning out. Yeah, neither cars made the curb. Both, both cars missed the corner and Chase again lucky. Marty. Terrific top 10 run going for Chase Briscoe, trying to fix that lateral grip issue. Kind of on the early side of the window with 34 laps to go in this race at Indianapolis. Kyle Larson also going to come down pit road. You see him on the bottom of your screen. He asked Cliff Daniels a while ago, how long do we have before we can pit? Remember, he has that flat spotted tire. He made it live all the way through this run. 34 to go. These stops, and I bet you see some other drivers coming down pit road this time, Dave. Absolutely. Austin Sindrick and Brody Kostecki and Sindrick said that he needed a little bit of help in the turn early in the run. They reduced the air pressure in those two front tires. Five car in Predator as well. I would be shocked to see in the upper right, 34 getting close to the entrance of Pitt Road. I would think this would be the time. The leaders have to come. There comes the 34 of McDowell, 99 of Suarez, 9 of Chase Elliott. Be efficient. Remember how much Suarez made up on McDowell on this pit entry lane last time. We'll see if he's able to make up any time here. Looks like the gap kind of continued now. A long, long pit lane. Don't try to get aggressive. Don't speed, Kim. 
And Michael McDowell still complaining. Just needs a little bit more lateral grip, especially in the right. So the crew's going to go to work on that machine for tires to no go fuel. Crew chief Travis Peterson told the spotter, make sure you're working with the other cars we're going to blend in with. They think that's the 11 and the 6. Talk to those spotters. Make sure they're going to give us room. Marty. Yeah, midpoint of that run, Chase Elliott said, I love the balance right here for me. It's all about keeping rear grip. And then almost coming down pit road, he said, I've got to protect that left rear. Whatever you can do to help me to protect that rear grip. That's the situation for Chase Elliott. A heads up race against Daniel Suarez and his team. They have the number one pit stall because they won the pole. Suarez clearly better at the end of that run, but a long stop for the 99. Chase Elliott is going to go by. A disastrous stop here for Daniel Suarez and his team losing track position. We've already seen the nine off pit road. We had already seen the 34 of McDowell off pit road. The 45 of Tyler Reddick was seconds behind this battle, and he is all the way to the rear bumper of the 99 of Suarez. The absolute worst time to have an issue. 33 to go. Now it's back in the hands of the driver. Steve, what were they trying to do with the 99? The jackman came around to the left side and jacked it up while they were fueling, but they weren't doing anything with the tires. Were they trying to put more fuel in it? Oh, they shouldn't have to worry about that, though. This car should be able to get full, no problem being flat. So we got to just watch the entire stop. So the jack comes to the left side. Looks pretty normal. A little bit of slow on the left front. Tires on. Tires tight. Oh, there's your issue right there, Rick. Front hose. Look at the man right here. He's standing here. Hose underneath the tire, right? He says, I cannot leave until you jack the left side up. It's as simple as that. If we watch that again, when that car comes in and stops, that front hose has to be clear of those front tires. It creeps underneath the left front when the jack is dropped. Look at the frustration. Hundreds and hundreds of pit stops you practice for those little things. Man, what a bad time. So let's watch right here. We're going to watch it nice and slow. Look at this hose. So right there, you saw it. There's a loop in the hose. If we back up about five or six frames, you see the loop right here. That's not normal. That should be all stretched out there nice and straight. As he comes around, it creates a loop. It seems so small. It's like it catches his right leg, and it actually lassoes itself. And what happens is the left front tire is on it. He's lucky there's enough air pressure to take the nut off. The gun could shut off this way. You jack it up, and now you see the gap. The problem is nobody's going to recognize it. The tire carrier steps, moves it in a little bit more. Game over for the 99. Actually, great job of the Jackman. Look, I know it's slow, but this could have been, you know, a 30, 40 second disaster. You see the frustration behind pit wall. Big miscue for the 99. Now it's time to recover. Let's hear what they have to say. So I need your head down. I need you to go get these spots. Come on. We're going to put it on your back today. You're going to go get it done. And then after that, I love the leadership from Travis Mack, who came on the radio, said, listen, I want you to take a deep breath, Daniel. This is all going to cycle out. We should be in the third position. Steve, you worked with Travis Mack for a long time. Dale Jr. Doing the best he can to lead this team, keep his driver calm, and keep him focused. They've earned a lot of stage points. Top five still could be in the offing today. Well, that's the key, guys, right? Like, if this isn't a must win. While a win would be great, those stage points have made the day relatively successful. Let's not run somebody over, run off track, wreck our car trying to get back up there. There's still 31 laps to go in this race. Well, I love the fact they said, hey, we're going to put it on your shoulders. We trust you. You're going to bail us out. I love that. That's saying, hey, man, we messed up, but we got the best driver. Go get it done. And that is unlike that team. That has been throughout the year the best, the eighth best pit crew on pit road. Just a small miscue, and it's going to be costly. Well, last wave of green fag cycle underway. Bell leads Wallace. McDowell, though, fresh tires and full of tanks. Running third, he can go to the finish.
fans, make sure to download the official app of NASCAR. You can follow the racing action with free live scoring in car cameras, as well as a radio broadcast. Search NASCAR in your app store, and make sure to start a free trial today. You're watching the NASCAR Cup Series Verizon 200 at the Brickyard with just 29 laps to go. See Bubba Wallace leaving pit road, doing a nice job. Fender's still on it, car's still looking good. And as we take a look at the running order with 29 laps to go, Michael McDowell, Elliott, Suarez, Reddick, all off pit road with enough fuel to make it to the finish. Hamlin, Kozlowski, they're a little off strategy. We're expecting a pit stop out of the fifth and sixth place cars. Kyle Busch in seventh has enough fuel, potential engine issues. Kobayashi still has to make a pit stop. Bowman, Briscoe, Truex, Larson, all off pit road. So those are kind of your players. Right now it's McDowell with a nice lead over three seconds. What a run by Micah McDowell in this organization on the week where they said, these are our drivers. Yep. McDowell and Gilliland, we're going to continue to build. So, so impressive. I know he won the Daytona 500, and that was a monumental day for this young man, or veteran driver, to be quite honest. 450 starts. But if he can come and win on this road course, needing to make the playoffs, this would be huge. Michael McDowell is a fighter. You think about his career, first about 10 years or so, he never didn't even run a full-time season. And he kind of drove cars that were not very competitive, and he just kept grinding and grinding and grinding, and here he is. There's a lot of work left to do with 28 to go. Let's be clear, a lot of stuff can happen, but Michael McDowell knows how to go fast in a race car, and he has found a way to persevere and keep going when a lot of people would have quit. It's good to see a guy with that much fight having a shot to win this race. Car owner Bob Jenkins for Front Row Motorsports has stuck it out, ground his way through many years running toward the back half of the field. Finally seeing his organization become a front runner. We've seen him run good at road courses. We've seen him win at super speedways, but this is legit speed. They drove up, taken the lead, led many laps today. They're putting themselves in a great position to make the playoffs on performance alone. It's incredible what this team has done to get better. Remember, they've lost their crew chief. Right? Blake Harris was a crew chief a year ago. He moved over to Hendrick Motorsports. Travis Peterson takes over this 34 car. And we've seen some great strategy calls and things like that. But for raw speed, this is this is the most impressive run we've seen for the 34. Travis Peterson was an engineer at Hendrick at one point. Came from Junior Motorsports. Was an engineer on one of one of my cars for a while. Finally found himself an opportunity as a crew chief and is doing an incredible job with this team this year. So again, McDowell out in front. He has a three and a half second lead over Chase Elliott. 39 cars started the race, 39 still running. Three are off the pace just a bit. A lap down with Balicki, Logano, and Haley. Corey LaJoy right now running in the 34th position. And Corey has a few special guests that have joined that team on the pit box. Yeah, Rick, one of the cool things about the crossover weekend, look who's hanging out on Corey LaJoy's pit box. Colton Herta, who's won here at the road course before Kyle Kirkwood won a few weeks ago on the streets of Nashville, won Long Beach earlier this year. So I just talked to both of them, and I said, hey, 28 laps to go. You going to get out of here and beat the traffic? They said, no way, man. This race is too cool. They're enjoying it, and they didn't have to be here today. They came out on their own volition. Of course, Andretti Autosport to Cambridge having a closer relationship with Spire. I asked Colton, is that going to bring you to the race? Track more, he said, I would love to. I asked Kyle, what cup race would you like to run? He said, I would love to run Miami. That's my home track. But Junior, I asked Colton Herta, what race would you want to run? He said Daytona. But only if Junior gives me some lessons. Some lessons. So are you up for some lessons for Colton Herta? Maybe get him in the car for the Daytona 500. Hey, what an honor that would be. <laughs> and all of these guys, every time, you know, and, and they're all mostly, right, road course specialists, right? That's their expertise. They all want to run ovals. When they come to NASCAR, they want to go to Daytona. They want to go to ovals. Kyle Busch had a little issue out on the racetrack as he's trying to find pace in this car with the engine issues. He's about a second off, so he's having to do everything he can in the braking zones and through the turns to get speed or any kind of pace out of this car. Larson just went by him and we were talking and looking oh. at as we have oh. an issue here. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. just in front of that 15 of Jensen Button. But Kyle Larson uh, had just gone by Kyle Busch. And you look at the issue that took place here, a little contact there. 
Maybe a little bit more here. <laughs> Maybe a lot more there. There's a little arguing Ricky going says. on. Yeah, Ricky's like, ah. He it, sent him. Yeah. He's talking about Kyle Busch trying to make pace, so let's take a look. Just locking up that tire. And, and that's not a track, that's not a corner where you typically see lock up, but he's he's actually just pushing as hard as he can in all the corners to be able to try to find the speed. And he has to drive the car differently when it's down on power. Yeah, well, when he downshifts also, it doesn't slow the car down like it does when it's full power. And now he's gonna continue to lock it up. So it 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 locks it up and go, oh, he's missed a, he's missed a groove. Now he's gotta come down here and stop. What happens is once you flat spot that tire. And now it puts a, it literally puts a flat spot on it. And now it seems like every time you go to break, it finds that flat spot and it just continues to slide. Here he comes to pit road. I think you heard him say tires, needs tires. Yeah, four tires, guys, four tires. One of the hardest braking zones as far as car balance because you're still kind of turning, which unloads that right front tire. and. You can almost see it just skipping across the pavement right there. And this is a good decision. If you know it's that easy to lock up, come put fresh tires on it. If you continue, that tire will finally fail. You'll slide all the way through the tire. Then it could be heavy damage. On pit road and race leader McDowell is just coming through turn 11 right now. So it looks like Kyle could stay out in front of the leader and stay on the lead lap. It will be close as he's coming off of pit road and McDowell making his way right now through 12 and 13. And it's just a long, such a long pit road. But as we are covering that with the eight, I will say the last two laps, the nine car has taken this lead to under three seconds. So with 25 laps to go, we saw this in the IndyCar race yesterday, that battle between Scott Dixon and Ray Hall. Green flag running to the end. We'll see this time between McDowell and Chase Elliott. 24 to go here at Indy.
an eight second lead. Gibbs is going to win at Indianapolis. Spin to win. Dixon has done it in Indy. Never count this guy out. Chet Lawrence keeps the perfect season alive. He wins the race and with it, the 450 National Motocross Championship. What a weekend of motorsports on the NBC Sports family of networks. The IndyCar win for Scott Dixon, his first win of 2023. That makes it 19 straight years for the Iceman to get a win. Then the youth movement happened here also at Indianapolis with Ty Gibbs getting the win in the Xfinity Series race. But you talk about youth movement. How about pro motocross? 20-year-old Jet Lawrence clinched the pro motocross championship in his rookie season with his 18th straight win. Can he finish the season undefeated? If so, he would be only the third ever rider to go undefeated in the outdoor series. The two other, our very own Ricky Carmichael and James Stewart. A fantastic weekend. 22 laps to go here in the Cup Series race with Michael McDowell out front. Rick, let's talk about the Ruoff Mortgage Keys to Victory Lane. Yeah, number one, will it go green? Guys are kind of spread out a little bit, but brakes are getting hot. Cars aren't driving well. Who's going to make a mistake to bring that caution out? Yeah, and if it comes out, who has the right strategy? Everybody's kind of married to their final green flag pit stop when we look at the front three or four cars. But if the yellow comes out, do you need tires? And then the bubble battle with Michael McDowell leading this race. A win there would lock him into the playoffs. That would move Bubba Wallace to 16th in points, and he could lose half of his points cushion today to third running Daniel Suarez. Bubba right now in 20th position. I thought we were getting ready to get that caution. Todd Gillen exits turn 11. Car gets loose, overcorrects, contact with the wall. Gets the car stopped, ends up getting into pit lane. So big transition from the flat to the banking and just, just got away from him. Very similar to what we saw Brody Kostecki do in qualifying. The transition there, the bottoming out, all kinds of things happening as they get up on that banking there in turn 11. We ride along with Van Gisbergen, and just behind him is Chris Buescher, who has won the last two races of the Cup Series. Let's go through the field, brought to you by eBay. Kim, start us off. I talked to leader Michael McDowell this morning, and he said people have underplayed what this team has been able to accomplish. With our smaller resources, we should not be contending with the JGRs and the Hendricks, but we are. And he said it's fun, but it's also nerve-wracking. He said the more nervous that I've ever been, but he likes it. He said he feeds off of that nervous energy. And Marty, I can't think of it. Desperate for a win. Chase Elliott desperate for a win as well. Steve mentioned a moment ago he has been cutting into McDowell's lead. Why? Here's a hint. Listen. Your gear selection change is not hurting you back there. That's positive. So there you go, changing the way he's shifting gears on the back stretch, and they've started catching McDowell a little bit. That pit stop a moment ago for Daniel Suarez, the last stop of the day so far. Maybe there's one more. Cost him 10 seconds on the track. Suarez saying, I just need rear grip. That's what he needs the longer they run, and he is now nine seconds behind McDowell. And Tyler Reddick came on the radio a little while ago, said the handling of the car is not bad. I just don't have the speed I thought we would have today. And we also need a little bit of track position as well. He's in the fourth spot, Dave. Alex Bowman is not giving up in the fifth spot. He has passed two cars in the last two laps. His crew chief, Blake Harris, told me this morning, we could win this week or next week. Alex is really good, and we are good as well. He said, I just want him to get to the end so he has a chance to fight, Kim. And Dave riding behind Alex in the sixth position is Brad Keselowski, and they are on an opposite strategy. They still have to make their final pit stop of the day. Their goal was to score more points than Kevin Harvick. They did that by staying out, grabbing points at the end of stage two. So this team should be expected on pit road before the end of the race, Marty. Fun battle watching Chase Briscoe and these guys try and swap up the eighth position. Briscoe right now in that eighth spot. He told me, I can find another gear here at Indianapolis. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because his hometown's about an hour from the racetrack. Population 4,300 in Mitchell, Indiana. And today, over 100 friends and family here as Denny Hamlin starts to come down pit road in front of you, Dave. And Marty, we knew this was going to happen because he pitted on lap 36. 
having qualified 25th, crew chief Chris Gabehart told me, I need things to fall our way today. They have not. He's got to pit out of position for the final time today, and he'll lose all the track position he had, Rick. Yeah, stage two winner, though, so he did get a playoff point, which he can carry into the playoffs and then through each round if he is able to proceed from round to round. And that was a big thing for him, uh, coming in, wanting as many playoff points as he could get. You see the battle still all around the racetrack for position. Yeah, that green and white number six right there, Brad Keselowski. He's going to have to come to pit road, but in front of him, Bell, Larson behind him, SVG, and Busher in the 17. Those are all for position. Gene Van Gisbergen running in the 11th spot right now. You mentioned Keselowski, who's in front of him, will have to come to pit road here. Just a few laps. 19 to go. Van Gisbergen's going to get by Keselowski. Busher as well. Right at the back of this, that 12 of Ryan Blaney has put some really nice laps together. And right there, as you called him out, you see the tire lock up. There's Keselowski making his way onto pit road. We haven't seen the 12 near the 16 since their incident on track. The last car in line, we haven't said his name, I think, yet today. That 41 of Ryan Priest is a lap down. Kim. And like we talked about, Brian Keselowski making his final stop of the day. They were on a completely opposite strategy under green flag conditions right now, looking for a very smooth stop. Crew Chief Matt McCall reminding the team, no mistakes here. Four tires, Sunoco Fuel for Brad, who has loved his car all day. Brad coming off the pit road. A career day as far as laps led for Michael McDowell. 36 laps led already. Listen into the radio. Do what you're doing. You're beginning to drive away. Just give me gap. How many laps to go? No more feedback, please. How about that? No more feedback. That's the best thing a crew chief can hear, right? He wants gap back to Elliott and no more information. I'm, it's crystal clear what I have to do. I don't need to talk to you anymore. That's my information, 18 laps to go. Yeah, how do you do these last 18 laps? You focus one corner at a time. Right now, the focus is turn one. How do I get by this eight car? How do I do it cleanly? It's just one corner at a time. You can't think about lap. You know, you can't let think about the next lap or the next lap or even the end result. You have to connect all the dots, hit every mark, do everything right for the next 17 laps, and that's corner by corner. And some drivers just want to focus. They don't want anybody talking to them. Just let me do my job. So think of the time these guys have been in the car, right? We had that one really early yellow, but since then it's been green flag. 60 straight laps of green flag racing. Looks like Jensen Button and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. are having some more contact on the racetrack. So this is down into turn seven. So the 15 misses the corner. Doors the 47 hard. It's a button, an F1 champion. They don't do that in F1. <laughs> there would be a penalty for that. But if you remember, the 47 spun the 15 earlier. So maybe a little payback there. Absolutely. Sure, there's some anger involved. On board with Kamui Kobayashi, he's like, man, I, this is fun to watch, but I don't want to be any part of what you guys have going on. 93 minutes of green flag racing, over an hour and a half. And you know, you can say, well, they had two pit stops. Well, that's not a break. You have to focus on your pit road speed. Basically, you get about 10 seconds while you're sitting in the Oh! oh. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr. sends Kamui Kobayashi. Yeah, well, it's happy go hard, go hard here. So Ricky needs, needs to get about three or four more, and he'll have the ball. <laughs> All the international drivers. That trick. <laughs> Trying to be perfect. And we see the 47 charging in a little bit too hard. It's in the back of the 67, and around goes Kamui Kobayashi.
Big Ten football is coming to NBC and Peacock. First stop is Happy Valley as West Virginia will visit Penn State on September 2nd, the premiere of Big Ten Saturday night. Let's take a look at the Toyota driver updates and you see Tyler Reddick running in the fourth position right now. Martin Trex Jr. seventh and Bell also a part of the top ten as they run. Tyler Reddick very fast trying to take the fight. Suarez a little further back though. Ty Gibbs in a 54 car. We saw him. He got caught up in that wreck early in the race. He has continued to fight, and here he is on the bumper of Austin Cindric. Remember, he's in this battle for the playoffs. Every spot matters. He's got a very, very fast race car. He's worked himself back up to 14. So a good fight by Ty Gibbs. Didn't quit, didn't lay down, and now trying to get by Cindric. Two Xfinity Series champions running here nose to tail. Dave. Yeah, I like that, Rick. They both won that championship. They'd like to win this one. Here goes Ty Gibbs to the inside. Oh, is he going to have enough room? Ah, they're going to still stay side by side, and Gibbs is going to have to back off. Remember, he won yesterday. Confidence to this young man, and he's showing it right now. Racing Cindric. Takes a spot away from Austin, and so Ty Gibbs now moving up into the 13th position. That's pretty impressive, Bill, to work that outside. Turn 12 to have the opportunity in turn 13 and shows you kind of pace they have. The confidence he has as a driver, just not the cautions that he needed to get yeah. caught back up. He's got plenty of speed. We got, we got, got a guys, couple more spots. Sorry, Steve, he's got a couple more spots right there in front of him. He's going to go after Blaney. I'm going to start looking at guys like that, Junior, right? That had speed, just, just haven't got this field bunch back up. and. I mean, your heart has to break for Daniel Suarez, right? He came in, had that hose underneath the left front tire, rejoined way behind, eight, nine, almost 10 seconds behind the leader. He's closed this gap down to six and a half seconds, but, you know, he's going to need some help. This is a guy that came in needing a great day. He started on the pole, was overtaken by McDowell, and he closed to the rear bumper of McDowell in the first set of green flag pit stops, doing a great job, and actually leapfrogged the 34. Had a little pushing and shoving with the nine car. And then really the moment for the 99, which ruined the day so far, was this. The air hose underneath the left front. You see the 99 driving by on pit lane. They still have to change tires. Just a huge, it's just heartbreak for Daniel Suarez. It's still 12 to go. You get a caution. He's going to be right back into this. but continues once again faster than both McDowell and Elliott that lap. Now McDowell getting into a little bit of traffic here that he'll have to negotiate around. Yeah he was he was uh, losing a little bit of time to the nine of Chase Elliott that shrunk down to less than three seconds but then started beating Chase's time. But this traffic right here is going to cost him a little bit. He's got to work through. Getting by Mike Rockefeller there in the 42. And that's what you want as a leader. You know, he showed Rockefeller he wanted the spot. Mike gave him some respect, didn't push him, didn't fight him very hard. Now he's on Kobayashi. He's hoping for the same thing right here. Do not hold me up, please. I'm the leader. So far, we have seen the international drivers be very respectful of the regulars. Kabui does a good job there, allowing a 34 through. Now Rockenfeller trying to get by Kamui Kobayashi. Marty. Speaking of Mike Rockenfeller in the 42, last week Noah Gregson was suspended indefinitely by NASCAR after apparently liking a racially derogatory image on social media. Then on Thursday of this week, Legacy Motor Club and Noah Gregson put out a joint statement saying that Gregson had requested to be released from his contract. In the statement, Gregson said, quote, I love racing and I'm looking forward to a second chance to compete for wins at the highest level of NASCAR and most importantly, make my family, my team and the fans proud of me once again. Rockefeller not only in this week as Kamui Kobayashi tries to track him down, but also next week at Watkins Glen for Rockefeller. Much more, Rick, to come on this story as the weeks develop. Yeah, Marty, and it was a Monday, as you mentioned, a Monday call and Rockefeller was in the United States. He was at Road America. He and his family, which consists of his three kids age two seven and nine all rode back from 
Road America to Charlotte, almost a 15 hour car ride to get back, get his seat fitted in the 42, uh, spend a little time with the team to understand exactly what he was going to have as an undertaking. But the call came from, you know, co owner of Legacy Motor Club, Jimmy Johnson, who had run with him. Uh, in garage 56 uh, when they were together for the Le Mans race. We see Vengas Bruggen here tracking down Christopher Bell. That's for ninth. These two are tired of each other. Yeah, I was going to say, Chris faced <laughs> each other all day. Christopher's like, man, this guy again. He's been on his bumper. You know, a different experience. Oh, big moment right there. Wow. A different experience for Shane in this race. You know, he came into Chicago and his background had a lot of street racing, right? And so he came there and he's a little more comfortable than all the other guys. For everybody else, it was very strange, very weird. And he came in there and he was comfortable and he had speed from the minute they unloaded and got on racetrack. He's been fast this week for sure, sitting there running 10th, obviously very good, but now he's getting a little bit more of the full NASCAR experience and how good these regular drivers are. And while Rockefeller and a few of these other drivers are here for a one-off, this guy might be somebody we see more often going into next season. He's gonna finish out the supercars this year, but he wants to come back. He wants to race more in the Cup Series. He wants to make a career, albeit a brief one. I don't know how many you know, years he could possibly run in the Cup Series and have success, but he definitely wants to give it his best opportunity and come out here and make it work. If he's going to do it, they're going to have to find a way for him to get oval experience, not at the Cup level. If you took him, you know, he went to the truck race the other night at Indianapolis Raceway Park, you know, ran in the, in the you know, the low 20s, high teens. If he's going to race on Sundays with these guys at Michigan's, at Charlotte's, at those places, he is going to have a ton of work to do. So you got to find a way to do it. Trucks, Xfinity, late models, whatever it is, before you expose him to that at this level. And they're comparing his his entry into NASCAR sort of like Marcus Ambrose. You got to remember, Marcus ran trucks. He had a long sort of runway into the Cup Series. It wasn't just a year or two, a crash course, if you will, to figure these ovals out. So it'll be quite an impressive thing. If it's ambitious. Uh, for what 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 he wants to do, but definitely going to try to make it work, and we'll see if he'll come back next year and, and run some more races with us. This battle right here is tightened right up. This 99 car of Suarez. You see Reddick to the inside in the 45 and trying to take that spot away. Again, that's for third. Now they're going to run through here, almost contact. Reddick did not want to give it up. He wanted to maintain. Position, look at him working the car. He was offline, a lot of dirt on him tires, trying to work them tires clean so he can perform in the braking zone here. Under 10 laps to go in this race, coming up on eight to go. Good speed out of this 45 right here, late in the race, and he too would probably love to see a caution to give him an opportunity at the front two. You mentioned a guy looking for a caution, the nine of Chase Elliott second started third has run at the front all day long 2.5 seconds back and this is a guy that has seven road course wins to his career but all in the old generation of car seven wins and 11 starts unbelievable but since the move to the next gen car 11 starts zero wins 144 laps led but the stats are a little off he has five top fives in eight races and he's well on his way the same sort of speed again for the nine car so the interesting thing is you know those top fives have come to different winners svg won them we've seen reddick win the races now you have michael mcdowell right it's not like he's losing to the same car back when he won those seven races it was like elliot truex elliot truex now it's like a different cast of characters in front of him each and every road course race, but, but only one spot. Yeah, you see the names that he's amongst as far as most road course wins. Now, there are more road course races being run now, but Steve, you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, the numbers not quite spelling out the whole story because his average is the best. I mean, he's his average finish is really good. He just hasn't been to victory lane as often as what we had seen in those first 11 road course starts. And he's hovering right around two and a half seconds behind McDowell. He's a little bit quicker. You have to imagine, though, who's pushing oh, harder. Is McDowell pushing harder? Is he running just enough not to make mistakes? You have to imagine Chase Elliott is giving us everything he has, Marty.
as you can imagine, all the spotters around the track for the nine are saying, hey, there's debris everywhere. They do need that caution. But talking to Alan Gustin this morning, he said, here at Indianapolis, I think Chase is still learning this track. In fact, in the middle of the race last year, he told the team that. I'm still picking up what to do. Watkins Glen next week. That's the track they have the most confidence in. Chase has two wins there. Maybe should have been three had his teammate Kyle Larson not moved him out of the way at the end of the race last year. McDowell out front right now, but Chase Elliott feels very good about next week, Kim. Well, Marty, the communication to McDowell has been very minimal. They just have been telling him the interval to chase every lap, but the communication between crew chief Travis Peterson and spotter Clayton Hughes has ratcheted up. Take a listen. Point eight, nine has the same traffic to deal with driving away. Got to find these fires to get them the out of the way. They're not helping us enough. So the intensity has ratcheted up for crew chief Travis Peterson talking about the lapped cars on the track, making sure the spotters for McDowell are getting the track clear for their driver to have a smooth last seven laps here at Indy. Big, big corner back there of turn seven. Just about missed turn seven entirely in that 34 car. And Junior, one thing to bring up with seven laps to go is we expected all these pit stops around lap 49 to be inside their fuel window, but remember. 47 this, out of the way. You hear more than that once of help with that 47. It'll be interesting to see. They're going to be close on fuel. I think everyone can make it, but you wonder if they, anyone in the field is sweating, right? Did they get their car completely full? Are they running harder this time? We've seen cars go this far. We'll see if anybody has issues in the closing lap. A little further back in the field, Andy Lally, Mike Rockefeller. Rockefeller on the inside, contact, moves Lally out of the way. McDowell finally around the 47 car and the break is on to turn one. Now there are three lap cars between your leader McDowell and Chase Elliott. Three, three cars between, tell on the back, 2.3, three cars between. That's good information. That's McDowell's team. That's something to comfort him. Hey, there's a lot of traffic between y'all. Just relax here, six to go, coming to five laps to go for the 34. You said relax, and I think that's the right word. Like, I didn't like to get him out of the way, move that guy, get the spotter to move that guy. Like, just let him do his job. You know, there's no need to give panic, reason to panic to the driver. It's about hitting your marks right now. Well, we have to remember, too, there's a second channel. There's a lot of that communication is happening on. I'm sure the driver's probably not hearing most of that frantic communicate that would be terrible for the driver to have to deal with trying to get around negotiate this racetrack well one thing this panic you want to talk about panic mike mcdowell winning changes that whole bubble conversation i mean look at the bottom left right we we talked about three points five points all of those things when mcdowell if he can hold on to this win he jumps up he will end up in yellow you see the leader next to his name right now that puts bubba at plus 28 bubba's having a fine day he's doing everything he can he's running 18th marty yeah, Steve, and that's the frustrating part. Absolute worst case scenario for 23-11 and Bubba Wallace. They did not need a new winner right now. McDowell out front and in five laps could be a new winner. But Steve, what do you do? He and Booty Barker came in with a plan, just have a solid day. They've done that. They've had a very solid day. Bubba Wallace right now in 18th. Not spectacular. They did what they needed to do, but the new winner just changes the game. Well, you just have to execute the plan you laid out. This isn't race one or two. Right? We've run well over 20 races at this point. The regular season is a long time. You just now have to try to close it out. Oh, man, we have a car off in the gravel. That's the 16 of AJ. He's going to be able to get to the pavement, wherever he's at. It's like he's on the at, runway for yeah, a minute. stays at speed. Pretty frustrating Sorry, day guys, for AJ. The thing about, you know, Bubba Wallace, Come into this race plus 58 to the cut line, so he could possibly lose about half of that cushion. And the 99 of Daniel Suarez gaining 29 points at Michigan. Nobody saw that happening. And then having another incredible day here. 17 points earned already, regardless of where he finishes. It's made this bubble battle compelling. It's been awesome the last several weeks to talk about it and to watch it happen. Chase Elliott still with those lap cars between them. Just about two seconds, a little over two seconds back as we see AJ off track back there. He did a good job, you know. I know some people running around this racetrack would love to see a caution. AJ did a good job. It's better to be able to get through that gravel and back on the racetrack, keep it going. 
Michael McDowell out in front. And remember, he has one career win. One career win at the highest level of stock car racing, and it came at the biggest race. The Daytona 500 back in 2021 as the 2 and the 22 wrecked. The 34 of McDowell, the seas parted. He went through and was able to stay out front and get the win. Chase Elliott finished second to him. But what a huge celebration it was for McDowell to get that win. Now, he has been the dominant driver with the dominant car here today at Indianapolis. I saw these boys that calm down out here. They're giving me a heart attack with these uh, going off track and stuff. That is certainly channel two. There is no way that Michael McDowell is listening to that. But you know, guess who ran second that day of the 500? Chase Elliott. Right now, two seconds behind McDowell. That gap has not gotten any smaller. And Chase hasn't really been able to run down and get around these lap cars either. They're not slow cars by any means. You can see they're hanging right around. Point four, two cars between. And again, it's about hitting your marks, not making mistakes. Everything that you've done to this point, just keep doing it. Even if it's a couple tenths, three tenths slower, those high risk areas, heavy braking zones into one, into seven, into 12, back it up just a touch. Make sure you don't get yourself in trouble. It's hard to do when you're in this rhythm that McDowell's in, been in it all day. It's hard to change it. It's hard to get conservative. Sometimes when people get conservative, they actually make mistakes. You as a driver got to decide, how hard am I going to push? And what am I comfortable doing? Am I better off just keep attacking the, the racetrack, or do I want to back it up? And Jeff, you bring a, a great point as far as the focus that these drivers have had to have throughout this entire race. Because remember, the only caution that has come out during this race was on lap two. So they have gone, they're closing in on going 80 laps of green flag racing here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the road course, having to maintain that focus and not make mistakes for so many turns. Kim. And while you would think that those caution breaks that we used to have would allow a driver to reset, I asked Michael specifically about this this morning. Do you, can you catch your breath? Do you need to? And he said, I actually prefer no stage caution because they allow me to stay in my rhythm. And here is a rhythm track. These road courses, they are rhythm tracks. This works to my advantage, and we're seeing that here today. Under two laps to go. 1.8 seconds, the gap between one and two. And now Michael McDowell just wants to see that white flag. Yeah. He knows when he sees that white flag, it kind of goes back into his hands. He has to finish out the last couple laps, but the white flag would be the end if a yellow did come out. That's absolutely right. You're leading a race like this coming down to the last few laps. You just want to be able to get to that white. 2.4 back. Telling him the distance back to second which is the nine there. That's now the number nine of Chase Elliott. The 42 is going to let Chase through. Chase now only a second and a half back. Through 11, 12, and 13. Through 14 and coming to the front stretch. That white flag that you talked about, McDowell. Getting ready to see it. Don't look in the mirror, Michael. <laughs> Just put the lap together. But the gap is closing. White flag at the line, bud. White flag at the line. Here he comes onto the front stretch. One lap to go. Presented by Credit One Bank. But he can see that nine car. Oh, yeah. He can look in the mirror and see the nine car. And that raises the intensity just a little bit. He's gotten super conservative on corner entry, trying not to make a mistake. And Chase the opposite. He's on full aggression that last lap, almost a second better than McDowell. Yeah, Chase needs this race in the worst kind of way. There's no points avenue for him to make the playoffs. It's a win or nothing. Smooth here, bud, 12 back. 
in the world of stock car racing. Michael McDowell has won oh. at the biggest track of Daytona. And now, in the entire world of racing, the most famous track. He's looking for a win here at Indianapolis. Watch Chase Elliott in this breaking zone of turn 11. It's going to be everything he's got. Twelve, thirteen, and fourteen in front of him. The final three turns. The gap is closed to a second. Through fourteen for the final time. Michael hey, McDowell comes Just onto the front stretch in Indy. The thirty-eight-year-old is going to win at Indianapolis. Yes, yes, Ricky. What a day for Michael McDowell. His two wins in the world of stock car racing come at the two most famous tracks in the world. And look at the drivers coming by to congratulate him. Yeah, thanks, guys, so much. on the radio said make sure to get my family so important to him wife Jamie son Lucas daughter Trace Emma James Riley Christine more drivers going by giving a thumbs up to McDowell again his career has been a long one Hundred and fifty three starts for Michael McDowell for the early part of his career. It was spent finishing in the 20th to 30th position. I just believe trying, it went to Indianapolis. Just trying to get the best finishes he could and now he's won at the Brickyard. King of the coolest racetracks on the planet both of them buddy. Oh man, I'm so, so thankful. Thank you guys so much. One spot short for Chase Elliott. He had got the gap under a second, but just not enough time. And Michael McDowell didn't make a mistake. Auto Parts. There's the family. He's locked in the playoffs again. The 
tradition that started with Dale Jarrett after winning the Brickyard 400 here, taking his team to kiss the bricks. Well, Michael McDowell, his family, and his team are going to be able to do that same tradition. You pick two better wins than the Daytona 500 for the first career win and the second one at Indianapolis. It puts him in the playoffs. Michael, as a young man who was coming up through open wheel racing, did you ever dream you would win here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway? Oh man, this is such a dream come true. I'm, I'm so thankful to everybody at uh, Front Row Motorsports, Bob Jenkins, uh, Horizon Hobbies, Love Shop Soft Freight Auction, Chicago Pneumatic. Man, we had a fast forward must sing. Uh, everybody at the uh, Roush Engine Shop, Doug, uh, these, these guys gave me everything today. We had the fastest car. We executed, we did what we needed to do. Uh, just so thankful. So thankful to uh, still be grinding it out in the Cup Series um, to put on a performance like that. I don't know if it was dominant, but it felt pretty dominant to me. <laughs> Welcome to the playoffs. What were the emotions on those final few laps? Because Chase Elliott was closing quick. You know, I was really trying to pace myself. I, I figured there'd be a late race caution. I didn't want to burn my stuff up. So I was just trying to maintain that gap. Then when I got into traffic, started closing, I had to push it. But I just can't believe it. So thankful to Bob Jenkins, all of our partners, um, Bell Racing Helmets, Sparco. Uh, there's so many people that help us. Uh, so thankful to everybody that's stuck behind us. Uh, it's been a grind, and I'm so proud. Did you think the path to the playoffs for your team was with a win and much less? I'll go with dominant as well, a dominant win. You know, I, I thought we could point our way in, but after the car that we had yesterday in practice, I thought, man, we got a good shot at winning if we could just get track position and maintain it. So uh, just, yeah, I can't believe it. So thankful. Uh, also, Wiley X. I don't know where they're at right now. They should be on my head, but um, they've been with me for over 10 years and it's, uh, it's great to have partners like that. Michael, what does it mean to have the family here to celebrate a win in Indianapolis, a place you always dreamed of just racing at, but it also puts you in the playoffs? Yeah, it's such a big deal. I mean, you know, winning the Daytona 500 was one of the coolest moments you could ever have. Uh, but going to victory lane without your family, that was tough. And so <laughs> we cherry pick. My family comes to the races we think we can win. We thought we could win this one. Just so proud. There you go, Michael McDowell, the emotion. Jamie walks in. He's in the playoffs. He wins at Indianapolis, a place coming up through racing, Rick. He dreamed of racing. Now he's won it. He'll get to kiss the bricks in a moment. And you see the moment hitting him. He can tell what he's just done. He's accomplished something that very few can say. They have won at Daytona, and they have won at Indianapolis. Michael McDowell on the most dominant performance of his career was out front for 54 of the 82 laps. He mentioned it, a dominant performance indeed. Michael McDowell has locked himself into the playoffs with his win here at Indy.